Rotation. A rotation is a circular movement of an object around a center of rotation. A three-dimensional object can always be rotated around an infinite number of imaginary lines called rotation axes. If the axis passes through the body's center of mass, the body is said to rotate upon itself, or spin. A rotation about an external point, for example the Earth about the Sun, is called a revolution or orbital revolution, typically when it is produced by gravity. The axis is called a pole. Mathematically, a rotation is a rigid body movement which, unlike a translation, keeps a point fixed. This definition applies to rotations within both two and three dimensions. All rigid body movements are rotations, translations, or combinations of the two. A rotation is simply a progressive radial orientation to a common point. That common point lies within the axis of that motion. The axis is 90 degrees perpendicular to the plane of the motion. If the axis of the rotation lies external of the body in question then the body is said to orbit. There is no fundamental difference between a rotation and an orbit and or spin. The key distinction is simply where the axis of the rotation lies, either within or outside of a body in question. This distinction can be demonstrated for both rigid and non-rigid bodies. If a rotation around a point or axis is followed by a second rotation around the same point slash axis, a third rotation results. The reverse of a rotation is also a rotation. Thus, the rotations around a point slash axis form a group. However, a rotation around a point or axis and a rotation around a different point slash axis may result in something other than a rotation, for example a translation. Rotations around the x, y and z axes are called principal rotations. Rotation around any axis can be performed by taking the rotation around the x-axis, followed by a rotation around the y-axis, and followed by a rotation around the z-axis. That is to say, any spatial rotation can be decomposed into o a combination of principal rotations. In flight dynamics, the principal rotations are known as yaw, pitch, and roll. This terminology is also used in computer graphics. In astronomy, Rotation is a commonly observed phenomenon. Stars, planets and similar bodies all spin around on their axes. The rotation rate of planets in the solar system was first measured by tracking visual features. Stellar rotation is measured through Doppler shift or by tracking active surface features. This rotation induces a centrifugal acceleration in the reference frame of the Earth which slightly counteracts the effect of gravity the closer one is to the equator. One effect is that an object weighs slightly less at the equator. Another is that the Earth is slightly deformed into an oblate spheroid. Another consequence of the rotation of a planet is the phenomenon of precession. Like a gyroscope, the overall effect is a slight wobble in the movement of the axis of a planet. Currently the tilt of the Earth's axis to its orbital plane is 23.44 degrees, but this angle changes slowly. While revolution is often used as a synonym for rotation, in many fields, particularly astronomy and related fields, revolution, often referred to as orbital revolution for clarity, is used when one body moves around another while rotation is used to mean the movement around an axis. Moons revolve around their planet, planets revolve about their star, and stars slowly revolve about their galaxial center. The motion of the components of galaxies is complex, but it usually includes a rotation component. Most planets in our solar system, including Earth, spin in the same direction as they orbit the Sun. The exceptions are Venus and Uranus. Uranus rotates nearly on its side relative to its orbit. Current speculation is that Uranus started off with a typical prograde orientation and was knocked on its side by a large impact early in its history. Venus may be thought of as rotating slowly backwards. The dwarf planet Pluto is anomalous in this and other ways. The speed of rotation is given by the angular frequency or frequency, or period. The time rate of change of angular frequency is angular acceleration, caused by torque. The ratio of the two is given by the moment of inertia. The angular velocity vector also describes the direction of the axis of rotation. Similarly the torque is an axial vector. The physics of the rotation around a fixed axis is mathematically described with the axis angle representation of rotations. According to the right hand rule, the direction away from the observer is associated with clockwise rotation and the direction towards the observer with counterclockwise rotation, like a screw. The laws of physics are currently believed to be invariant under any fixed rotation. In modern physical cosmology, the cosmological principle is the notion that the distribution of matter in the universe is homogeneous and isotropic when viewed in a large enough scale, 
since the forces are expected to act uniformly throughout the universe and have no preferred direction, and should, therefore, produce no observable irregularities in the large-scale structuring over the course of evolution of the matter field that was initially laid down by the Big Bang. In particular, for a system which behaves the same regardless of how it is oriented in space, its Lagrangian is rotationally invariant. According to Newton's theorem, if the action of a physical system is invariant under rotation, then angular momentum is conserved. Euler rotations provide an alternative description of a rotation. It is a composition of three rotations defined as the movement obtained by changing one off Euler angles while leaving the other two constant. Euler rotations are never expressed in terms of the external frame, or in terms of the co-moving rotated body frame, but in a mixture. They constitute a mixed axis of rotation system, where the first angle moves the line of nodes around the external axis C, the second rotates around the line of nodes and the third one is an intrinsic rotation around an axis fixed in the body that moves. These rotations are called precession, nutation, and intrinsic rotation. In flight dynamics, the principal rotations described with Euler angles above are known as pitch, roll and yaw. The term rotation is also used in aviation to refer to the upward pitch of an aircraft, particularly when starting the climb after takeoff. Principal rotations have the advantage of modeling a number of physical systems such as gimbals, and joysticks, so are easily visualized, and are a very compact way of storing a rotation. But they are difficult to use in calculations as even simple operations like combining rotations are expensive ado do, and suffer from a form of gimbal lock where the angles cannot be uniquely calculated for certain rotations. Many amusement rides provide rotation. A Ferris wheel has a horizontal central axis, and parallel axes for each gondola, where the rotation is opposite, by gravity or mechanically. As a result, at any time the orientation of the gondola is upright, just translated. The tip of the translation vector describes a circle. A carousel provides rotation about a vertical axis. Many rides provide a combination of rotations about several axes. In chairoplanes, the rotation about the vertical axis is provided mechanically, while the rotation about the horizontal axis is due to the centripetal force. In roller coaster inversions, the rotation about the horizontal axis is one or more full cycles, where inertia keeps people in their seats. Rotation of a ball or other object, usually called spin, plays a role in many sports, including topspin and backspin in tennis, English, follow and draw in billiards and pool, curve balls in baseball, spin bowling in cricket flying disc sports, etc. Table tennis paddles are manufactured with different surface characteristics to allow the player to impart a greater or lesser amount of spin to the ball. Rotation of a player one or more times around a vertical axis may be called spin in figure skating, twirling in baton twirling, or 360, 540, 720, etc. In snowboarding, etc. Rotation of a player or performer one or more times around a horizontal axis may be called a flip roll, somersault, heli, etc. in gymnastics, water skiing, or many other sports, or a one and a half, two and a half, gainer, etc. in diving, etc. A combination of vertical and horizontal rotation is called a Mobius and water skiing freestyle jumping. Rotation of a player around a vertical axis, generally between 180 and 360 degrees, may be called a spin move and is used as a deceptive or avoidance maneuver, or in an attempt to play, pass, or receive a ball or puck, etc., or to afford a player a view of the goal or other players. It is often seen in hockey, basketball, football of various codes, tennis, etc. The end result of any sequence of rotations of any object in 3D about a fixed point is always equivalent to a rotation about an axis. However, an object may physically rotate in 3D about a fixed point on more than one axis simultaneously in which case there is no single fixed axis of rotation just the fixed point. However, these two descriptions can be reconciled, such a physical motion can always be redescribed in terms of a single axis of rotation, provided the orientation of that axis relative to the object is allowed to change moment by moment. Two-dimensional rotations, unlike the three-dimensional ones, possess no axis of rotation. This is equivalent for linear transformations, with saying that there is no direction in the place which is kept unchanged by a two-dimensional rotation, except, of course, the identity.
The question of the existence of such a direction is the question of existence of an eigenvector for the matrix A representing the rotation. Every 2D rotation around the origin through an angle formula underscore 1 in counterclockwise direction can be quite simply represented by the following matrix. A standard eigenvalue determination leads to the characteristic equation which has as its eigenvalues. Therefore, there is no real eigenvalue, meaning that no real vector in the plane is kept unchanged by A. Knowing that the trace is an invariant, the rotation angle formula underscore phi for a proper orthogonal 3 by 3 rotation matrix formula underscore 6 is found by formula underscore 7. Using the principal arc cosine, this formula gives a rotation angle satisfying formula underscore 8. The corresponding rotation axis must be defined to point in a direction hat limits the rotation angle to not exceed 180 degrees. Every proper rotation formula underscore 6 in 3D space has an axis of rotation, which is defined such that any vector formula underscore 13 that is aligned with the rotation axis will not be affected by rotation. Accordingly, formula underscore 14, and the rotation axis therefore corresponds to an eigenvector of the rotation matrix associated with an eigenvalue of 1. As long as the rotation angle formula underscore 5 is non-zero. There is one and only one such direction. Because A has only real components, there is at least one real eigenvalue, and the remaining two eigenvalues must be complex conjugates of each other. Knowing that one is an eigenvalue, it follows that the remaining two eigenvalues are complex conjugates of each other, but this does not imply that they are complex, they could be real with double multiplicity. In the degenerate case of a rotation angle formula underscore 16, the remaining two eigenvalues are both equal to minus 1. In the degenerate case of a zero rotation angle, the rotation matrix is the identity, and all three eigenvalues are one. A spectral analysis is not required to find the rotation axis. It formula underscore 17 denotes the unit eigenvector aligned with the rotation axis, and if formula underscore 5 denotes the rotation angle, then it can be shown that formula underscore 19. Consequently, the expense of an eigenvalue analysis can be avoided by simply normalizing this vector if it has a non-zero magnitude. On the other hand, if this vector has a zero magnitude, it means that formula underscore 20. In other words, this vector will be zero if and only if the rotation angle is zero or 180 degrees, and the rotation axis may be assigned in this case by normalizing any column of formula underscore 21 that has a non-zero magnitude. This discussion applies to a proper rotation and hence formula underscore 22. Any improper orthogonal 3 by 3 matrix formula underscore 23rd of may be written as formula underscore 24, in which formula underscore 6 is proper orthogonal. That is, any improper orthogonal 3 by 3 matrix may be decomposed as a proper rotation followed by an inversion. It follows that the rotation axis of formula underscore 6 is also the eigenvector of formula underscore 23 corresponding to an eigenvalue of minus 1. As much as every tridimensional rotation has a rotation axis, also every tridimensional rotation has a plane, which is perpendicular to the rotation axis, and which is left invariant by the rotation. The rotation, restricted to this plane, is an ordinary 2D rotation. The proof proceeds similarly to the above discussion. First, suppose that all eigenvalues of the 3D rotation matrix A are real. This means that there is an orthogonal basis made by the corresponding eigenvectors, over which the effect of the rotation matrix is just stretching it. If we write A in this basis, it is diagonal, but a diagonal orthogonal matrix is made of just plus 1s and 1s in the diagonal entries. Therefore, we don't have a proper rotation, but either the identity or the result of a sequence of reflections. It follows, then, that a proper rotation has some complex eigenvalue. Let V be the corresponding eigenvector. Then, as we showed in the previous topic, formula underscore 28 is also an eigenvector, and formula underscore 29 and formula underscore 30 are such that their scalar product vanishes. Because, since formula underscore 32 is real, it equals its complex conjugate formula underscore 33, and formula underscore 34 and formula underscore 35 are both representations of the same scalar product between formula underscore 36 and formula underscore 28. This means formula underscore 29 and formula underscore 30 are orthogonal vectors. Also, they are both real vectors by construction. These vectors span the same subspace as formula underscore 36 and formula underscore 28, 
which is an invariant subspace under the application of A. Therefore, they span an invariant plane. This plane is orthogonal to the invariant axis, which corresponds to the remaining eigenvector of A, with eigenvalue 1, because of the orthogonality of the eigenvectors of A. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.